In this episode, Gordon traveled to Lighthouse Point, Florida to meet Andy Trousdale, a UK-born, European-trained chef who owns and leads the kitchen at Le Bistro. Despite the restaurant's location in a wealthy enclave, the locals do not appreciate Andy's style of cuisine, finding it stuck in the past. My food's perfect. I've worked long and hard and paid for the right to have what I want. Andy refuses to accept the possibility that his cooking, despite his impressive background, may not meet expectations. As such, he becomes defensive, attributing the issue not to his food, but to the locals' demanding attitudes and their lack of sophistication in understanding his culinary creations. Simply put, Andy is a control freak, not allowing anyone to cook but himself, even though he has a trained sous chef available who could assist with many of the tasks. As such, the restaurant is heavily in debt and losing thousands of dollars each month due in part to Andy's inability to effectively manage. The last thing I want to do is go and work for some idiot somewhere else. I hate idiots. He treats his wife Ellen the worst, with her taking the brunt of his criticism. I'm sorry. Where are you going? Get back here. You've fucked up enough tonight. Given the restaurant's dire financial situation, Andy has started teaching a cooking class on the side to local housewives looking for entertainment. It was at this precise moment that Gordon decided to drop in on Andy unexpectedly. Surprised by Chef Ramsay's presence, especially with him sitting in the front row, Andy becomes distracted and starts to burn the food he's cooking, embarrassing himself in front of his local audience. Should it be smoking? After the class, Gordon suggests they sit down together, along with Ellen, to address the core reasons behind Le Bistro's failure. When asked why their business has not succeeded in the nearly 10 years since it opened, Andy becomes defensive. Faced with nothing but excuses, Ramsey decides it's time to move on to the next phase, the taste test. He tries the duck rie, only to find a piece of bone in his food that almost chips his tooth. The next dish is a garlic coconut lamb curry roll. After taking a bite, he discovers the texture to be rubbery, but what is more strange to Gordon is the choice of a lamb curry roll for a French restaurant located in Florida. Gordon confronts Andy face to face about his lackluster and outdated cuisine. Andy refuses to believe Gordon when he mentions almost breaking his tooth on the duck bone and won't listen to any other criticism of his food. Having had enough of Andy's excuses and defensiveness, Gordon decides it is best instead to focus on what will be the next challenge, that evening's dinner service. He learns that Andy does not allow the sous chef, Hendrick, to cook at all. However, before Gordon can get more of the details, he is cut off by Andy, interrupting the conversation. Hey, 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 we don't have time for talking. I don't care if it's him or the queen. As the service begins that evening, dishes start coming back to the kitchen as quickly as they're going out due to quality issues. Yet Andy still refuses to take any responsibility or have any willingness to change. This frustrates Chef Ramsay as he realizes that both he and Andy have a lot in common. We're both English and we both studied in Paris, but there's one thing we don't share in common. I care about my customers. Andy, on the other hand, doesn't care what his customers think. To get through to him, Gordon has an idea. He invites the diners to fill out comment cards with their opinions on that evening's dinner service. The service receives an average rating of 4 out of 10, and the food a 3 out of 10. When asked whether they would consider returning, 78% respond with a no. Gordon tells Andy that he is blatantly ignorant of the fact that his food is stuck in the 1980s. This only serves to upset Andy even further, who brushes past Gordon walking away. Thankfully, like a proper British gentleman, he still found time to say, excuse me, as he walked past. Well, you're one-sided, that's all you want to fucking do, man. Excuse me? Gordon decides it is best to have a private conversation with Andy, so he takes him aside, offering him one last opportunity. Is he willing to change, yes or no? Andy responds with a nonchalant sure, indicating that Gordon can change anything he wants, no problem. Gordon clarifies that it must be him who is willing to make the changes personally with himself. Finally, Andy agrees and commits to do what is necessary to move forward. Gordon, relieved, decides to call it an evening and wishes him good night. The next day, under the typically sunny skies of Florida, Gordon takes Andy and Ellen out on a boat, possibly to prevent Andy from fleeing from the issues at hand. 
Once they descend down to the lower level, they're greeted with another surprise, a gathering of past customers ready to share their experiences. Andy and Ellen appear nervous. The customers are quite direct, sharing their disappointing experiences dining at La Bistro. Unsurprisingly, Andy continues to be defensive. Well, honestly, deep down, are you looking for naked women dancing on the table? Ramsey and some customers remind Andy that their feedback isn't personal, just business. Back at the restaurant, Ramsey aims to tackle the next issue, utilizing the sous chef Hendrick. Instead of having Andy micromanage everything in the kitchen, Ramsey's request to Andy is straightforward. Let Hendrick cook one dish that evening, the Red Snapper Special. Hendrick, having previous experience cooking Snapper, is eager to help. Andy grumbles about the decision, but reluctantly agrees to proceed. Customers quickly show interest in trying out the special Snapper dish on the menu that evening. Orders start coming into the kitchen much quicker, but Andy remains the bottleneck. 30 minutes into dinner service, he is still preparing each dish individually. Worse, he doesn't allow Hendrick to begin the snapper orders because he's monopolizing the limited cooking space. An hour and 10 minutes in, not one entree has been served. Struggling to persuade Andy to change his ways, Gordon tries a different strategy. He goes to the seafood restaurant a few doors down in the same plaza to order a takeout seared tuna. 10 minutes later, he's back at La Bistro, eating his meal on their front patio. While inside, the diners still haven't received their entrees. Finally, back in the kitchen, with some convincing by Gordon, Andy allows Hendrick to start cooking. The dishes begin to leave the kitchen, and surprisingly, people really enjoy them, especially the snapper. However, dishes from Andy's original menu continue to receive negative feedback. Following the service, Ramsey has another conversation with Andy and Ellen. Andy remains defensive, blaming the customers rather than his food. Gordon informs Andy that his crew will renovate the restaurant overnight. This presents Andy with an opportunity to start fresh, both in terms of the restaurant's aesthetics and his approach to cooking. Slowly, Andy seems to open up to the possibility of change, but will he? Ramsey's crew works through the night to renovate Le Bistro, marking the first renovation since the establishment was purchased almost a decade prior. The next day, Andy and Ellen arrive, eager to see the changes made. The first change is noticeable outside. Ramsey has updated the facade, the classic but dated exterior signage has been replaced with a modern version painted in a rich blue, featuring playful Comic Sans typography for the Labistro wordmark. Inside, they've added an eye-catching leather upholstered wall that's as comfortable as it is stylish. Gordon and Andy spend the rest of the relaunch day cooking new menu items designed to appeal to local diners, including oysters, steamed mussels, and the popular snapper. To raise the stakes for the evening's dinner service, each table hosts the VIP, the local police chief, the city commissioner, the top radio host, and a local food critic. Although initially irked that these VIPs hadn't visited his restaurant before, Andy is excited to cook for them that evening. The question remains, will Andy manage to stay calm under pressure and delegate tasks to Hendrick, or will his stubborn, controlling tendencies resurface? As the night begins, Andy starts well, but gradually reverts to his old ways. Realizing the key to success, though, is delegation, he starts to work effectively with Hendrick, utilizing his skills to expedite kitchen operations. They are able to work well together, and dishes get sent out with none getting sent back. The VIPs are delighted with their meals, and the customers leave satisfied after a successful relaunch night. Ramsey offers nothing but praise for Andy's performance. He bids farewell to the couple, receiving a smile from Andy, perhaps the first time he smiled the entire episode. Gordon Ramsay is welcome here anytime. Indeed, Gordon made a second visit to the Bistro, returning as part of a follow-up episode that aired the following year in 2011. I'm back in Lighthouse Point, Florida to visit the Bistro. Did Andy maintain the high standards established at the end of the original episode? Or did he revert to his old stubborn ways? He is greeted upon entry by Ellen, who tells him business has increased by 20% since his last visit. Next, in the kitchen, he reunites with a much more relaxed-looking Andy. However, the real test is whether Gordon will like the food this time around. Gordon's verdict as he tries a rack of lamb? He thinks it is delicious, which pleases Andy to hear. But Gordon's not done yet. He's got one more trick up his sleeve. With the restaurant buzzing and every seat taken, he stands up to make a toast. Turns out the place is hitting its 10th anniversary that week. In true Gordon style, he gets everyone to raise their glass toasting to 10 more years of success and good vibes. Lunch is on the house today. 
Amazing! <laughs> that was a joke. Ramsey leaves, satisfied once again with his visit to Le Bistro, marking his second departure from the establishment. That was over 12 years ago. What has become of Le Bistro since then? Did it manage to survive another decade as Chef Ramsey had hoped for? After the episode aired, diner feedback showed a significant improvement in quality, helping to keep existing customers and attract new ones. Usually, there's a long wait, sometimes over a year, between filming and airing an episode, during which feedback comes mainly from longtime customers. Those customers may dislike changes to the menu and push restaurants to revert to old offerings. However, Andy's restaurant didn't face this issue. His regulars embraced Ramsey's changes, and he didn't lose any of them. Viewers of the show have joked that Andy looks like a poor man Simon Cowell. Fact check, true. There were other interesting things in this episode that caught viewers' attention, like the dog wearing sunglasses on the boat. Also, if you look closely at the diner feedback card left on the table, it reads, Not fit to eat. I've been in World War II and had better food. Ouch. How things have changed, though. The Bistro has become locally famous for its beef wellington, with some diners even daring to say it surpasses Chef Ramsay's version. Hmm, it would be interesting to hear from someone who has tried both. Speaking of history, in November 2013, Andy took a trip back to the Waterside Inn in Bray, England, where he worked from 1987 to 1988. It's been a three-star Michelin restaurant continuously since 1985, the only restaurant outside France to hold that honor. It has served as a training ground for several of the world's leading chefs, including Marco Pierre White, Pierre Kaufman, and of course, Gordon Ramsay. Following this period, Andy expanded his culinary experience by working at various other Michelin-starred restaurants across Europe during the late 1980s and early 1990s. In 1992, his career path led him to Florida, where he worked on a luxury yacht before joining the staff at Yesterday's and then the Blue Moon Fish Company in Fort Lauderdale. Later, Andy ventured to the U.S. Virgin Islands, where he opened his own venue, the Tavern on the Waterfront in St. Thomas. It was here where he met Ellen. They would be married and have a son together. In 2001, Andy and Ellen decided to make their way back to Florida to purchase Le Bistro. Fast forward to 2021, and they celebrated 20 years in business, just as Chef Ramsay had correctly predicted they would do so in the revisited episode that took place 10 years prior. They've been featured in numerous publications over the years. In addition to that, online reviews are overwhelmingly positive across all platforms, as they've maintained the high standards set by Chef Ramsay. Also, good news, Seafood World, that was the restaurant Chef Ramsay picked up the takeaway from, is still open today as well. As for the bistro, there have been some changes, though, such as removing the top portion of the leather upholstered wall panels that Chef Ramsay installed during the makeover. Personally, I thought it looked better before, as I don't think those paintings do much, but to each their own. Regrettably, I don't have an update on what happened to sous chef Hendrick. I hope he is doing well, though. He definitely seemed like he had a lot of potential. Andy still teaches cooking classes, as well as being very active on social media. Chef Ramsay says it is only a matter of time before Andy gets a Michelin star. Fifteen years following its feature on Kitchen Nightmares, the Bistro continues to operate successfully. Clearly, embracing Chef Ramsay's advice proves to be a recipe for success, showcasing how a restaurant can truly excel.